So in this video, we're going to be doing an overview of the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6800 here. This is the younger sibling, to the XT, and we're going to see what this card is capable of. Let's jump into it. Looking at the specs first of the Sapphire Nitro RX 6800, it's built on the new and improved AMD RDNA 2 architecture using the 7 nanometer process. It has a boost clock of up to 2190 MHz a game clock of 1980 megahertz and the card also features 60 compute units and 128 megabytes of the all new AMD Infinity cache alongside 16 gigabytes of dedicated GDR6 memory. The card can handle up to four displays and supports one HDMI port at 2.1 and three display ports at version 1.4. The card requires a two 8-pin power connector and the recommended power supply is 750 watts. There's also a direct dual BIOS switch that can be found on the side of the card, so if you happen to be dabbling in overclocking and push things a little bit too far, you can always switch to the other BIOS. The Nitro Plus series has always been a very clean looking card, especially thanks to its futuristic backplate design that will blend seamlessly into most case themes. On the tail of the card, you can find the ARGB pins to sync up to your motherboard to customize your LEDs even further. The card's form factor will fit into most cases, the only thing to consider is that it can take up to three expansion slots. Sapphire's Trax coolers have had a brand new redesign for the 6000 series, reducing a large sum of weight from the heatsink. Not only does this reduce any unnecessary pressure on the PCI Express slot, but it doesn't compromise cooling efficiency with its sleek design and solid engineering. And with the all new V-Fin construction, it accelerates centralized airflow around the GPU to dissipate the heat efficiently, while the wave fin design reduces air friction to improve noise levels. An additional heat pipe can be located beneath the memory module to help dissipate heat even further, plus alongside top-notch thermal pads to deliver better thermal conductivity. We also see a new and improved hybrid fan blade design that helps the card increase downward air pressure, reducing the GPU and memory temperatures by 3 degrees, while still keeping the fan noises low. We also still feature the Sapphire's Quick Fan Connect that enables you to quickly replace a fan head without having to return the card to the manufacturer for repair. Now with the introduction of the RDNA 2 architecture, we see a plethora of features for the 6000 series of cards, such as smart access memory. This utilizes the PCI Express bandwidth to remove any bottlenecks that gives you access to your whole memory on your GPU. Usually systems are limited on how much VRAM can be used at one given time, but thanks to RDNA 2 and the new Ryzen 5000 series of CPUs, you can get the most out of your GPU memory, giving you potential performance boosts in some games. Now it does vary from title to title, but in the best case scenarios, you can see up to a 10% performance boost. To take advantage of this feature, you'll need an AMD 5000 series CPU, an AMD Radeon RX 6000 series graphics card, as well as a compatible AM4 motherboard, but make sure to check with the manufacturer to see if your board is compatible with smart access memory. When playing at super high frame rates or at a big resolution, you can put an awful lot of pressure on your GPU's memory bandwidth. However, due to what AMD is coining Infinity Cache, which is basically a 128 megabyte chunk of L3 cache, AMD is claiming to be able to efficiently double the available bandwidth while also greatly reducing power consumption. Thanks to the RX 6000 series of graphics cards, we now have hardware accelerated ray tracing on AMD GPUs. This opens the door to much more accurate lighting, shadows, and even reflections in our games. We're already seeing impressive results, especially on the AMD partnered titles such as Godfall and Dirt 5, but there's still no getting around it. Ray tracing is incredibly demanding, and the good news is, is that with the inclusion of the AMD Fidelity Effects Suite, which currently offers seven different open source tools that developers can leverage in their games to improve both the visuals and performance. The most highly anticipated feature in the suite is unfortunately not quite ready at this time of the recording of this video. That feature is called Super Resolution, and we know that AMD hopes to be able to take a lower resolution image and upscale it to native in order to dramatically boost performance without losing too much, if any, image quality. It goes without saying that combining ray tracing and super resolution could be a game changer, and I for one look forward to seeing how it handles the job when it launches in the near future. Of course, AMD have got more tricks up their sleeve with the Radeon software. So let's take a look at the anti-lag and boost modes. They're designed to improve input latency to keep your mouse feeling smooth and reactive at all times. Boost mode will dramatically reduce your visual quality in favor of FPS. 
This applies when turning your mouse from side to side or looking in new areas of a map that you haven't explored yet. But if you're running around in a straight line with little mouse movement, your image quality will sharpen up to your default value that you set in game. The anti-lag feature works best if your graphics card is being heavily taxed and what happens in these situations is that your CPU will start processing your mouse inputs ahead of your GPU which causes that horrible drifting lagging feeling which no one wants. By enabling the anti-lag feature in the games you'll significantly reduce your input latency keeping your mouse inputs feeling much more smooth. AMD Chill was actually designed to improve efficiency, however by setting both the minimum and maximum frame rates to the same value, you end up with a pretty handy frame rate limiter that offers stable frame times and matches RTTS in terms of latency. This is particularly useful for games that don't offer a built-in frame rate limiter functionality, especially when combined with a FreeSync compatible monitors which work best when you keep your frame rate within the variable refresh ranges. For example, if you're rocking 144Hz FreeSync compatible monitor, you can cap your frame rate to around let's say 140fps to avoid any additional input latency associated with vSync if vSync is enabled, or avoid that nasty screen tearing if vSync is disabled. Ideally, you'll want to cap your frame rate using an in-game limiter, but if one of those are not available, AMD Chill is a solid alternative, especially considering it's only a few clicks away and already built into the drivers. So let's now take a look at some benchmark results using Metro Exodus at ultra settings. At 1080p we scored 97 frames per second, at 1440p we scored 81 frames per second, and at 4K, 52 frames per second. I then ran the same test again, this time enabling smart access memory and gained a couple of extra frames across all the resolutions. Nothing massive mind, but a tiny performance boost nonetheless. As I said earlier in the video though, it does vary from title to title on the performance increases. We then ran it again, but this time turning on ray tracing and we do see dips in performance, but we still hold out quite well, especially at 1080p and 1440p. And remember, once super resolution enters the scene, we'll hopefully see those numbers increase in those demanding ray tracing scenarios. To round up with the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6800, it's simply put one hell of a card with robust well thought out cooling solutions to its tools and features to help dial in performance or push out your graphical settings to your liking. If you're already equipped with a 1080p or 1440p monitor, you'll absolutely not be disappointed at the performance at these resolutions, both competitive gamers and enthusiasts alike. 4K certainly is more demanding, but the 6800 is more than capable of taking you there, maybe not at the same level as those other resolutions. That being said though, super resolution is nearby and it'll be interesting to see how much more can be pushed out of this card. And if 4K gameplay is truly what you desire, I would probably point you in the direction of the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6800 XT. Anyways, I hope you found this overview useful in some way, shape or form. Always make sure to go check out other reviewers do your homework before buying your next graphics card.
If you like the video, please click on the like button, write a comment, and subscribe to my channel.